Hi, everybody. I'm Monty McIntyre, and I have been a civil attorney in California since 1980, a member of ABOTA since 1995, and I've been listed in Best Attorneys in America continuously since 2012. Now, I'm going to bring to you today a new case summary and a discussion of a new case that was published last month. Why do I know about these new cases? This is a case dealing with evidence. The reason I know about them is Starting in 2012, I started to summarize new civil cases because I wanted to keep track of them for the things that I was going to start doing full time, <clears throat> being a mediator, arbitrator, and a referee. And I've kept doing it. And over time, I started to offer these summaries to lawyers. So now I offer subscriptions on a limited basis to give my subscribers competitive advantages. And my subscriptions cover cases published either monthly, quarterly, or annually. And I open these periodically. They're not open all the time with the limited number. And what my subscriptions do is they're one paragraph summaries of these long cases, and they get you the information you need. My subscribers, they not only save enormous amounts of time, but they also win more because they work up their cases better and they make more money. Now, this summary service that I created is called California Case Summaries. And so this summary that I'm going to, this case I'm going to discuss is one of the summaries in my publication that was published last month. Now, I use these summaries in my own work where I'm these days working as a mediator, arbitrator, and referee at ADR Services so I can be the best that I can be, either settling your cases as a mediator or making fair and impartial decisions as an arbitrator or a referee. In addition to these things, I also help mentor young lawyers because there's a crisis in the law. When I was a young lawyer in the 80s, we were trained by other lawyers, but really starting since the late 80s, or early 90s, lawyers became too busy. Nobody's getting mentored, even in large or mid-sized firms. And so I offer a service called Lawyer Master Mentoring to help lawyers develop their skills quickly and also avoid mistakes, to help them develop systems that they need in their practice and to help them build the dream practice that they want. And finally, I will on occasion still take an occasional case as a civil trial lawyer and I will handle things in business, insurance bad faith, personal injury, real property and wrongful death. So this case that we're gonna talk about today in today's blog and this blog is going to be released on May 17th, is a case dealing with evidence. Now, one of the interesting things about evidence is, you know, something you want to, may want to use it as evidence, but the question is, can you get it admitted into evidence? So in this case, uh, there is a very interesting case where the plaintiff was suing for things such as stalking, assault, intentional inflection of emotional distress and domestic violence. And she actually won at trial and got um, $1.3 million in compensatory damages, 6,000 in punitive, not very much there, 850,000 in attorney's fees and $60,000 in costs. Well, the issue on appeal in this particular case and you'll see my summary of this case below is, did the trial court made some proper decisions regarding admissibility of evidence? Well, one of the pieces of evidence that was used was a recorded telephone call that the plaintiff had recorded without getting the consent of the other person on the line. Well, in California, that's not proper because the penal code prohibits that. And you can also get civil penalties against you if you record somebody without their consent. In this case, as you'll see in the summary below, the Court of Appeal ended up ruling that the trial court had quite properly decided that the tape of the telephone conversation could be used for the limited purpose of impeaching the witness, even though it was in violation of the penal code. So it's always good to keep up with your evidence. And even though the evidence cases aren't published as often as other areas, it's something that's really important for all civil lawyers to know who may go into the courtroom because you have to get your evidence into, uh, you have to get your documents and information into evidence in order to prove your case. 
So thanks for joining me for today's blog. And until we meet again, probably next week, I hope you do well and be well. And I hope you continue to stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye now.